Okay, awesome. Now let's transition real quick. Um, let's get into something. I'm going to read the Ten Commandments. I mean, you brought it up about <laughs> the, the handwriting uh, of Yah. Okay, the handwriting of God. Uh, I'm going to read it. And I'm going to start out. Uh, starting at first one. I'm the Lord your God. Ye shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. You should not take the Lord, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Honor your mother and your father. You should not kill, or it should be, you should not murder, the great translation. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You should not covet your neighbor's wife. You should not covet your neighbor's goods. Which one did I miss? What's the fourth commandment? Okay. All right. I purposely skipped over that for a reason. Let's talk about this Sabbath. <laughs> this is the elephant in the room. <laughs> this is the elephant in the room. Um, I know that, especially coming up in, in the Baptist church, um, the nine commandments is always pushed. For some reason, we just, the main one that says remember is the one that we forgot. Okay? So let's deal with that. Apostle, I'm going to put you on the spot. You go ahead. Let's talk about this Saturday. So actually, um, I got advantage in that area. In oh, state, I was oh that's, yeah, I yeah. Something yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> in the Saturday. Remember the Saturday? In and out. So I knew that from a lad. I'm going to tell you a funny story. This is a true story, right? I was selling drugs, right? Why am I going to dump scroll? Some people come to try to, from the Sunday church to try to give us Jesus, right? Yeah. And I'm not the argue. Oh, Y'all don't keep the Sabbath. I got a pistol and crack. I'm arguing the Sabbath. You know? <laughs> so the dump scroll, so I'm a believer in the Sabbath. But let's back up. As I stated, Moses wrote all of his things on Geneva, which was Calvary. Mm -hmm. Symbolic that they may have an expiration point. God in his wisdom and his knowledge did not trust no part of the Bible when it came to the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. God wrote them on stone, meaning that stone lasts forever. Mm -hmm. I'm the Lord that God I change not. So God purposely wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath is still binding. Because if you can take away one, if I'll say you break one, you break them all. So if you remove the fourth, you're going to break them all. So the Sabbath is still in effect. However, because people was having church on Sundays, and you all, you know where it comes from. Yeah. That when Constantine joined the church, the Roman Catholic Church, that Sunday was the worship of pagan gods. It was called Sunday. She meant Sunday, the worship of the pagan gods. And when Constantine joined the church, the pagans came in, and because it was convenient, they adapted Sunday as the day of worship. But the Ten Commandments does not change. The law is still in effect. It started in the garden. I tell people that all the time. Let's go to the garden. Mm -hmm. Six days do you work, but the seventh day is the seventh day of the Lord that God in it. He blessed the sanctified. No other day has been sanctified. The word sanctified means set aside mm -hmm. for a divine purpose. He blessed it, made it holy. There is no other day in the scripture that you can show me where God set that another day aside and blessed it mm -hmm. for a holy use. That was in Genesis before there was even seen. Matter of fact, you read the book of Isaiah. Isaiah said, in the heaven made new mm -hmm. from one blue moon to another moon, from one south to another south, all flesh will come and worship before me. So it's going to be in the new Jerusalem. In the new Jerusalem. Come on. We're going to have some Shabbat in the new Jerusalem. Yes. I'm going to get you, but we're going to get some trouble. But uh, yeah, and, and I, you said it right. I, I, I 100% believe that uh, the Sabbath and, and see, when we, when we look at where we are today, we got to understand we're we 2,000 years removed from uh, something that is that's new. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking from these scriptures externally. We're looking from these scriptures point of, well, they say that, they say we have no cultural connection to what went on at the time and how we even got here, what we call Christendom today. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that develop to where we are today that has so removed us from 
what we call, I say, our heritage. When I, when, I, when I see the law, I don't necessarily see a list of do's and don'ts, per se. I see my heritage. I see my culture. I see this is something that's given to me, but I'm disconnected from it. But there's something that's deeper in it, which is, I would say, since you mentioned symbolically, symbolically, the, the law written on hearts on. was to show that he said, I, I will give you a heart of stone. Mm -hmm. He wrote the commandments, if you will, on a heart of stone. Mm -hmm. But he said, well, I will give you a new heart. Come on, come on. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Right. And, and, and he would soften up the heart. See, and, and, I, and I, we always mention this all the time. You know, Israel was taking the laws and commandments, and they knew they were going to commit adultery. Yeah. They knew they were going to fornicate. They said, you know, I got to pull out for tomorrow. I got to pull out for the next day. <laughs> and so the most high, they were like, you know, I, they, they, they get around this law, but I, I got I to gotta find a way to correct this thing. And so what the most high wanted to do was give us his spirit to carry out the nature of what he intended for, for the law. Right. And so um, what he says in Ezekiel, he says, I'm going to give them my spirit. I'm going to put my spirit in them. Why? So that they may walk out my laws and my commandments. How? The way he designed, the way he, with his nature, with his love, with his, with his, so that way you don't just do the commandments because all oh, he said do it, I was be doing it. He said, you didn't delight in the things that I, that I gave you to do. So uh, on this side of it, when you talk about the Sabbath, has the Sabbath been a burdensome thing or has it been a delight to us? Well, it all depends on how we understand the Sabbath. Uh, when, when, when they looked at Yahweh he was going out just trying to get something to eat for his, for his, for his blood. Yeah. And uh, they had made the law. Yeah. Don't you pick corn on the Sabbath. Yeah. And he was like, wait a minute. Y'all, y'all, the Sabbath not supposed to be made like that. Y'all, 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 y'all trying to, y'all trying to make this thing fine. This ain't supposed to be, have you not read? Yeah. And when David went into the, to, to the place, he, he didn't know what he eat for himself. When he gave it to his boy, that was little. Right. So, understanding, uh, I think it all goes to just understanding how we understand uh, our concept of when we say law. Uh, when you say Sabbath, what are you talking about? Well, I believe on this age, we're coming to understand. He, he's, I, I think we are in a process of return. We're in a process where the Most High is bringing us to a place where, okay, I'm teaching you my ways. Uh, he's going to bring us to a point where he's refining those things off of our lives that were just taught to us from uh, uh, just tradition. You know, the things that we created for ourselves. When you talk about the Sabbath, I believe that um, we ought to keep the Sabbath. We ought to keep that in reverence. The same way that we held Sunday worship, the same way we did those things. Those things are going to come, come survive this and we can give him that, that praise. Our focus, our attention on him. I think that's what we should continue.